Hi there, everyone. Just a quick video today, purely because I'm talking at a conference this weekend, so I don't have an awful lot of time this week to make some videos. So I want to talk to you about a little bit of information that I've had about a new project that I want to do. I was talking to a friend yesterday in theatres, uh, Jim Roberts, you may have seen him in some of my other videos. He's an anaesthetist who's setting up something known as the X event project which is a negative pressure thing that opens up your lungs and helps you breathe. It was born out of some work done during COVID to help people breathe better without needing to use a CPAP mask. Now, that's going along. It's hit some stumbling blocks along the way because we need funding. We need you know, multi-million pounds worth of funding to get this going. To make a medical device of this size and of this nature is obviously quite difficult. And so I was thinking with Jim's blessing and the rest of the X-Event team. I haven't actually spoken to them about this video, but they'll soon see this, I'm sure. Um, the idea is that Jim and I and uh, some of the other guys in the X-Event project, what we want to do is create not the, the big intensive care type device, which is currently being made and is made and we're trying to do tests on it. What we're going to try and do is set up a wearable device, one that you can walk around with, one that you can sleep at home with, now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, X event is, uh, it's a, how do I explain it? It's a negative pressure uh, ventilation. So what that means is normally when people get um, go through anesthesia and they have a general anesthetic, you can't breathe very well. And so what we do is we put a tube down into your lungs and we pump air into your lungs to inflate your lungs like this. But that's not really how our lungs really work. What our lungs do is just use our rib cage to open up the lungs and it sort of sucks in air from the outside world. So because the space is getting bigger, it sort of sucks in air. If you want to know more about that little concept, there is a video, I'll stick it up here somewhere, um, and you can look at that video. It was done four years ago, so uh, apologies for, <laughs> the lighting was bad then as well, but you'll understand the concept there. Now, the idea is that uh, for the big X event project, we're going to get people in uh, so they don't have to be in intensive care, but they're not well enough to go onto the ward. So this is like a step down thing. And there's lots of things it could be useful for pneumonias and really bad infections and things like that. But the wearable thing where you can walk around with this thing all the time or sleep with it in your own bed, I think is more interesting for my side of things. I I'm not an intensivist, I'm not an anaesthetist or anything like that. But what I am interested in is people with sleeping problems and and problems breathing at night. Now, it is slightly useful for people with obstructive sleep apnea, but more importantly, it will really, really help people with central sleep apnea. So central sleep apnea is not when there's a blockage in the back of your throat, it's just your brain is not telling your lungs to take a breath, as it were. Um, so they go, they, they lie in bed, they're breathing away, and then they stop, they go slightly blue, and then eventually they wake up. It's not that they're choking, desperately trying to breathe. It's just the brain just decides not to tell the body to breathe. And that's very difficult to treat. Again, most people get CPAP and they pump the air um, into their lungs to try and inflate the lungs so that you don't get into these situations. But it's hard to get that right because pumping more air into lungs naturally makes you have little apneic attacks anyway because you've got too much oxygen. But in central sleep apnea, it can stop and start during the night. So it is difficult. In this device, if it's quite small, I'm not sure exactly how big it is because we're about to make it. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. This is a quite a small device that goes across your chest. You can walk around with it. I think it's, I think they said it was 1.8 kilos. So it's a, almost two bags of sugar worth. So um, a very light uh, rucksack or something. So you can sleep with it. It helps you breathe at night all through the night and it's really comfortable to breathe in because you don't have to work so hard to breathe and that's the plan uh, for people with essential sleep apnea this would be a great relatively cheap sort of thing that they can use rather than using CPAP at night it also would help other people who have sleep problems and I haven't talked about this very much at all in my on this channel it's known as obesity hyperventilation syndrome and I'll explain that so and I think when, when I say that you could have central sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea, obesity hyperventilation syndrome, upper airway resistance syndrome, they're not, you can't, you, you're often not having just one of these things. You end up having maybe all four. Uh, so it's not, it's not like, oh, you've got um, pneumonia or you've got lung cancer or something like that. It's not quite as black and, um, black and white like that. You can have all four at the same time. 
but obesity hyperventilation syndrome is when you've got so large, so you're obese basically, that there's so much weight sitting on your chest. So when you're lying down, it's really hard when you're sleeping and resting and not putting so much effort into breathing for you to breathe enough to push this weight off your chest so you can take a deep enough breath. And so generally the carbon dioxide levels go up in your body uh, and that, that's not great for your breathing. Also with time, you can get to the point where you're not getting enough oxygen in, in either. So the same sort of thing that happens with obstructive sleep apnea, people with obesity hyperventilation syndrome have the same problems that people have with obstructive sleep, have the same symptoms and things like that. The same consequences as well with the blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes, and things like that, depression. So all of these things can happen. Now, what we're hoping for is to make this device that goes across your chest um, with a little fan that, that opens, and closes, uh, your, uh, opens and closes your breathing. That could be used for people with obesity hyperventilation syndrome. It helps them breathe. So it takes the effort out of breathing. And if we can make these people feel like they can breathe better, they get better night's sleep. They're not so tired in the morning. It'll be much easier for them to lose weight, assuming that that's the reason for their weight gain. Because often people, uh, I've said this in other videos, if you have sleep disturbance, you tend to gain weight. It's often people think, well, in the past, people used to think that the reason why you got obstructive sleep apnea is because you've been gaining too much weight and you just have to lose the weight and it will go away. That's not true. We know that sleep apnea causes you to gain weight. So often it's the sleep apnea that comes first and then you start gaining the weight. So back to hyperventilation syndrome. Uh, so with the obesity, if we can take almost the weight off so they can breathe like there isn't so much weight on them, that would be so much easier for them to breathe. And we just need to create that device, that wearable device. There are other people which are not related to sleep, <laughs> which I don't, I'm not obviously that as, as not as interested in as, as some of the other people, but they're really important conditions. So for example, someone may have had a neck injury and their lungs don't work properly. The, the phrenic nerve goes down on each side and powers the diaphragm, the, the sort of the battle that sort of keeps the lungs moving. If that's not working on one side or both sides, you can't breathe very well at all. This would take the pressure off and allow you to breathe at home and not lose one lung full of fluid or anything. You can use both lungs that way and you can still walk around and not feel tired or out of breath or so walk up the stairs, etc. Some people have neuromuscular diseases, uh, muscular dystrophy and things like that, or Guillain-Barre. I'm not going to go through all those diseases, but there are diseases where you can't use your muscles so well and you get tired very quickly. And because you get tired or you, the muscles aren't working as well as they used to, Breathing becomes very difficult. If you could help these people with breathing problems to expand their lungs much easier, they might be able to get out of the house for the first time in years or, or go for a walk in the park, which they may not have done for years and years because they need an oxygen canister with them or they get so tired because they can't get out of the house. Anyway, so this wearable X event, I think we're going to change the name uh, for the wearable version, but you can just walk around with this. I haven't got a picture to show you yet because this is a, I just decided to do this video before, before I started today, um, but I will show you soon. And if you join up for my newsletter, I think uh, there'll be, uh, there's a link in the video description below. If you're interested in trying out one of these devices, uh, let me know, because what I've thought is that I get little donations on this YouTube channel and I get obviously money from the advertising, the really annoying ads that you see before and after these, um, these videos. And I've saved all that up and I can put that money into making these devices. I don't have an awful lot of money, but if I could make some devices and give them away to people who really need them, uh, and as long as we get a bit of approval from people and get patients uh, who definitely have a problem, then, I could give this away to people and they could try it. And if they can get out to the park, then great. I can I can spend some of this money, which is meant to be for research, but a bit of charity doesn't mind. I don't mind giving it to charity. And if it means that these people do really well, I can A, make a product that can be used all around the world because it's not hugely expensive and you can make it yourself. A friend of uh, the teams made one of these devices with the sort of the spec that we talked about in an afternoon in his garage with a wetsuit and all sorts of other stuff.
So we're going to try and make it a bit like that. We're going to make some devices, give them away to people who really, really need it. So if you're interested in being one of those people who wants one of these free devices, uh, and if you're in England, I think, um, maybe we can give it around the world. I'm not sure. Uh, well, if you're interested, we're going to try and make this. Uh, the, the plan is that uh, eventually, because we're a charity, the X event charity, we're going to try and give these away. So the make it open source so perhaps people in the third world can put it together themselves with sort of standard stuff you can buy in say any third world sort of uh, supermarket you know the one we made well this chap made in the garage was made out of wood and things like that obviously at 1.8 kilos that's probably why it's so <laughs> made out of wood um but we want to make it out of you know some polycarbonate alloy or you know fiberglass or something like that it was much much lighter but making it as simple as possible so people can i could just make it and give it away to people and just to see if it works and it'll be like a it's it's like a thing that goes across your chest just about here or just just between your ribs and your abdomen just there and the idea is that it sits there all through the day all night it doesn't use an awful lot of power because it just has a fan running that pumps air in and out and i think it'll be great i think i think yeah well yeah You'll see in this video, in the videos that I'll make about it. And uh, hopefully the expert team won't be too upset that I made this video without consulting them. But I want to make one of these things and I want to make as many as I can, as much as the, the, the I think they're called super thanks or whatever they're called. Um, I could use that money to uh, make some of these devices. I'll speak to Jim and I spoke to him yesterday about this and he seems keen and uh, David Howard and all the other people in the team, hopefully they'll be up for this. Uh, I'm really excited. So do look at the X event proper thing, which is, you know, proper medical device where um, intensive care type levels. And we've made things in I think Pakistan, in, in Bangladesh, all sorts of places have made that device around the world and they're doing tests on it. I think uh, big companies are getting involved and it's really exciting, but I want something more for the, for the normal person. <laughs> Like sleep problems and things. Look, I'm rambling now. Look, I, uh, I should really script these videos. Do take care. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.